Good morning guys. As you can see, I just got out here with my Coyote tractor on the back there. I've got my Woodland Mills wood chipper. That thing's going to be put into action again here today and it's going to take care of a little chore that I've been meaning to take care of. And what that is, is getting rid of this slab rack slash offcut rack full of wood. This right here is what comes off of the sides of a log, which ultimately you're going to have if you're making stuff like this with a sawmill like that. That wood chipper is very, very valuable to me, not only for chipping brush, but chipping stuff like that. I don't like to have any waste around here. And when I say waste, I mean material that I'm not going to do something with. And so I don't want to just put that in a, in a big pile to burn or to rot. I want to use it if possible. I'm going to use it by making it into wood chips and then spreading it on my trails. That's what we're up against today. Let's check it out. So first things first, let's have a look at this thing. Now this green beauty here is the Woodland Mills WC68 wood chipper. Uh, this is on the back of my 40 horsepower at the engine. Coyote DK40 SE HST. Hydrostatic transmission tractor, 40 horsepower at the engine, making our way to the back here. I think we're sitting at about 33 horsepower at the PTO. That's what tends to happen with hydrostatic transmissions. You lose a bit of horsepower uh, through that transmission by the time it comes out the rear end there. Anyways, this tends to work really, really well at this horsepower. I've not encountered any situation where I haven't had material go through it and you know, take it easily. I've had material where you can tell it's working a bit harder than normal, but it's definitely not out of its capacity. So real good match right here. This thing, as you can tell, it has been around for a little bit. You notice some rust here and some rust there and that sort of thing, but that's to be expected. And I can be honest with you guys, this thing hangs out outside and here in Canada, we get all kinds of weather. So it's to be expected. It'll rust from time to time. I take a little bit of, um, undercoating material that spray that I tend to put on all my vehicles to slow the rust and I tend to hit all these spots up at some point anyways if we have a little look see inside here you can see we've got an infeed roller there some nice sharp teeth on there and uh, that's hydraulically driven over here so here's our hydraulic motor here's our hydraulic lines got a bit of a valve here to control how fast the infeed roller turns down here at the bottom we have our uh, forward neutral you guys will get get the picture in just a minute when we fire this up but the forward neutral and reverse switch for that infeed roller down at the very bottom here you guys can see we've got a uh, it just looks like a piece of metal um, with a woodland mills emblem on it but what this is is the hydraulic oil reservoir up here way around the front you guys can see the pto and if we sweep around here right there you guys can see there's that belt that belt is ultimately driven off the pto which comes down there to that pulley at the bottom. That pulley, we snake our way around here even further. I don't know if you guys can see in there, but that pulley is going to turn a pump. And that pump, as I mentioned, is connected with these hoses to this hydraulic, uh, hydraulic motor. Looking inside here underneath this green housing, what there is is the steel flywheel with the knives. You can sort of have a look-see in there. But this gets driven, the flywheel, directly off the PTO shaft, off the tractor. So if we look back this way, You'll see it's going directly into that housing where the flywheel is located. Flywheel turns right off of that. So let's fold this thing down. And it's very convenient because you can see how it uh, transport. It's nice and compact here. Now I have to pull on this handle and very carefully. Obviously you'd do this two handed if you didn't have a camera in your hands. But you guys can see it just sort of comes down into place. And then I've got two of these to connect. And the other thing I got to do, if you look upwards, that piece that was just connected up here, you have to disconnect it and hook it on here. So for this unit, I just constantly keep it greased just like you should. You'll see there's bearings in the front and the back of the flywheel. And I just keep those greased. And you can see right here, there's a Zerk fitting. I grease that as well. Now, right here, you've got springs on both sides and they're adjustable. These springs control the down pressure on that infeed roller on your material. Obviously, you want some down pressure so that the teeth can grab the material and draw it inwards. Well, last but not least, let's see if we can one-handedly turn this and that's pretty slick there we go whoa all right you guys see how that locked into place there i didn't quite get it where i wanted to but you can see how that sort of rotates 
two-handed is better. I can also adjust the uh, the chute here at the top. You'll see me do that in just a minute. I tend to position this so that I can put the material where I need it to be. And sometimes that includes a trailer. Now I don't have my little utility trailer out here today. There's gonna be a project coming with that utility trailer in the future, so stay tuned for that. But sometimes what I do is I pull the utility trailer right beside my chipper, and then I have the utility trailer hooked up to the ATV. And then what I do is I don't have to move this setup from whatever I'm chipping. I just, once I fill the utility trailer, I pull it out, go dump it with the ATV. That's not the case today. What I'll do, I'll just put the chips on the ground here and I'll come back with a bucket, pick it up and take it wherever it needs to be. Now, one last thing before I start up the tractor on the right hand side of your chipper, you'll notice this valve here. This valve has the number zero to 10 on it and this little adjustable lever. This controls how fast the infeed roller spins to take material right through the flywheel to get chipped. Now, with my experience with my tractor here, at 33 PTO horsepower, level 10, I have not encountered any material where the chipper won't take in the material as fast as it can. Now, if you're if you're gonna start chipping, I don't know, something really, really hard like ironwood or something, well, I might uh, dial it back a bit. And you can just move this lever back like this and that just allows the chipper to do its work without your tractor really bogging down because it's taking material in too fast. So level 10 for us here today, really light spruce really light fur material going through here and one other thing when you hear me fire up the tractor i'm going to fire it up and let it sit at idle i'm going to hit the pto switch then i'm going to come back and just have a quick look make sure everything is operating smoothly and then i'll go back in and rev it up to the 540 mark rpm that is on the tachometer all right so that's where i'm going with this today and you guys will see me do that in just a second so let's get down to it Okay, so what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to turn the key, but before I do that, if you guys sort of look down here, I've got the PTO set to manual, meaning that switch controls when it's on and off. Currently it's off, obviously, aside from the fact that the tractor's off. When I turn on the tractor, I'm going to have it at neutral, uh, excuse me, I'm going to have it at idle, and then I'm going to have that at manual, and then I'll switch on the PTO, then I'll go outside, have a look at it, then I'll come back in and rev up the tractor to where it needs to be. So let's try her out here. All right, so there we go. And what I was talking about uh, being the 540 RPM, I meant the PTO is gonna be at 540 RPM. The actual tractor is gonna be at that orange mark there, which if we have a look, is about 2500 RPM on the engine. And so let's fire up the tractor. All right, you guys can see the idle there. The idle is right around turn off the radio. The idle is right around 900, 1000 RPM. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit the PTO switch. All right, PTO is currently going. There's my indicator on my dash. And the parking brake's on. I'm in neutral with the engine. And one thing to be aware of, you'll see wood chips coming out there. And that's because last time I was chipping, uh, there's probably a few remnants of wood still in there, so you just got to be aware of that. We'll just walk around the other side here. Another thing I can do, you'll see in there the, the infeed rollers going. We'll just sort of bump that into neutral so it stops. Not going to get too close, but you can see there the PTO spinning, my guard's in place. Everything looks fine to me, so I'm happy. I'm ready to get this thing up to proper speed. All right, and let's rev her up here. And there you go, there's my 540 RPM on the PTO, about 2500 RPM on the engine. So let's go do some work.
right, let's have a little look at our handiwork here and you guys can see some nice big coarse pieces of wood chip. That's what I'm looking for. This stuff will get spread over all my trails and keep it from forming ruts and keep the dust down. So that right there is my WC68 wood chipper. This is attached to my 40 horsepower Coyote tractor with about 33 horsepower at the PTO. So all around a good day. That took me about an hour to get this uh, offcut slab rack taken care of. Now, not every one of these slabs ended up going through there. You'll notice I got a few on the ground here, and the reason is these are just too wide. The opening on that wood chipper is eight inches wide by six inches tall. Trust me, if you go any bigger than eight inches, you're not gonna force it through there. You might get it started, and then you'll get it so stuck, you're gonna hate life. So when they're too big, I definitely don't try them. I uh, just go ahead and find another use for them. Onto this slab rack, offcut rack. You guys know that I built this recently and I built it so that I could run my chainsaw through the slabs periodically to make uh, firewood that I throw into IBC cages over there. Now, if I wasn't gonna do that, I would probably make this a bit bigger, lower to the ground, maybe wider. That way I don't have to come out here and take care of the waste as often. Believe it or not, this fills up pretty quickly. And so I'm out here either chipping or cutting or disposing of this quite often. Some of you guys have even mentioned about getting a wagon or a trailer of sorts and not even using a slab rack like this and just throwing the offcuts or slabs into that, wheeling it away when you're done. I thought that was a pretty slick idea, but obviously I've got this built, so we're going to give this a good run through before we tackle any other ideas. So anyways, that's going to do it for me here today, I think. I'm going to get back in the tractor, turn on the tunes and enjoy my sludge on the ride out of here. Appreciate all you guys watching. Any questions down below in the comments. And for all of you guys, get out there, enjoy the spring, and I'll see you next time.